Hey, it's Pat here. In this video, you're gonna be learning how to use GarageBand to record and edit your podcast. I'll show you how to make sure your mic is set up properly, how to make sure your levels are exactly where they need to be, and also we're gonna do a fun little test recording, which you should do also if you are using the software. Hey, and really quick, this is actually a lesson that's pulled from my premium course, Power Up Podcasting, and I just wanted to share it with you for free uh, because I know a lot of you are looking how to use GarageBand, so uh, it's freely available to you, and it does reference other lessons in my premium course, but don't worry about that. Just get right in, learn how to use GarageBand, and crush it. Okay, so to start, just hit empty project. We don't need to create a hip hop beat or plug in our guitars or anything like that. We don't wanna choose voice either, that's for something else. Empty project is where you wanna start and then hit choose. And now it's gonna open up GarageBand, but first it's gonna ask you where the audio is actually gonna be coming from. Like I said, we're gonna be using our microphone, so select the microphone. Under input, you wanna make sure the ATR USB microphone is selected and also that it's in input one like this. This little circle is really important, that marks the file as, or the, the actual audio uh, that's coming in as mono, meaning both sides of the, the, of the speakers or both sides of the headphones, the left side and the right side, are gonna share the same, the same audio. If you select input one plus two, what you might record would be just one side and what you might import from like a, uh, an interview or something might be the other side and it's gonna sound really funky in speakers and in headphones, so you wanna make sure that it's just the single circle, not the sort of Venn diagram looking double circle. And you wanna make sure your instrument is the ATR USB mic. If not, uh, you wanna click on, on this arrow. This opens up the preferences, and here you can then reselect the input device uh, that you want. Uh, we have it set correctly right now. The output device is simply that when you hit play after you record something, where's the sound gonna come from that you can listen to? System setting is fine. If you have your headphones plugged in, that'll, that'll work. Uh, if you have some other audio that you wanna listen through, that's fine too. You'll actually notice that the ATR USB microphone can also be used as, a, as an output device. If you look at the back of your microphone, there's a little headphone jack there too. You can use that if you want, doesn't really matter. Now, if you wanna get back to this preferences later on, if you wanna change things, just head on over to GarageBand and hit preferences and that opens up this same window. But again, we just wanna make sure the ATR is selected and then we're gonna hit choose uh, or actually create and we're off. All right, and this is GarageBand. And the first thing you'll notice is that as I speak, you'll begin to see movement and color here for this first audio track. And that's good, we wanna see movement because that means GarageBand hears our audio. I'll tell you more about what the colors mean in a second and how to adjust it if you need to. But I will say that if you don't have any sound coming through, it either means you don't have the microphone selected or it's not plugged in. So you wanna make sure that you go to GarageBand and Preferences and make sure that your ATR USB microphone or your mic of choice is actually selected. You can also select it down here in case in the input for this particular track, in case it's not there as well, you can see it there. Uh, also make sure, just side note, that it is indeed on mono, the single circle, not on stereo, which you'll notice up here, uh, if you're in stereo, it, it'll have two sort of layers here, the, the, the bars, you'll see two of them. We wanna just see one there for when we're recording through GarageBand. Uh, if that's still not working and you're not hearing any audio come through or seeing any audio come through, it might just mean that your microphone's not on. Again, the Audio Technica sometimes fools you because it has a blue light even if the thing is not on. The blue light means it just has power. Flick it on and then you should be fine. Now, don't worry about all this too much because there's a lot that you actually don't need to worry about like this compressor and these controls down here. Down here, There's an equalizer too which allows you to change a few things. And again, a lot of this is made for musicians which is why you see things like the bar and the beat and the tempo and the key signature and the time signature. We don't need any of that stuff. We wanna keep it simple. So to remove all this and actually just show the time which is what we wanna know how, many, how long we've been recording for, just click on this arrow here to share the time as the display mode and there you can see as we begin recording the seconds and minutes will display there. We can also turn off this count in. We don't need four counts before we hit recording. We're not singing a song. Uh, and then finally the metronome we can turn off because we don't need to hear clicks because there's no measures. We're just simply recording our voice. Now what's cool about this is you'll see that the audio that's coming through is coming and it's kind of hitting mid-range to the, to the orange and that's totally fine. We do not want this bar as we speak to get all the way to the end. That's called clipping. And if you clip in your audio file, it means that people listening on the other end are gonna hear a distorted, distortion. And we don't want that. Now if you are speaking and it's clipping for you, it's getting it like deep into the red here at the very end, you can actually adjust your recording levels down here using this control. Now if I were to go down a little bit, you'll notice that my voice begins to get a little bit softer. And if I go a little bit higher, you'll notice that I'm actually going to go too high. So that becomes distorted now. And you'll see that just that does not sound good. You want it to be kind of 
like 85, 80% or to the point at which you are always speaking in the yellow. And that's going to take some practice. And that's the whole purpose of going through this test recording. You're going to actually do a test recording in just a minute and listen to yourself and just uh, adjust things as needed. Now, you'll notice here that this is audio one. This is called a track. Tracks are essentially like layers. They can live on top of each other, and you'll hear multiple tracks at the same time. And the best practice is to create different tracks for different things that are in your audio file or in your podcast. So, for example, this might just be a track just to put the intro music in. And as you begin to see in the next video, you're going to actually have tracks for your intro, for your – actually, let's just do that now – for your um, main voice – you're going to have a track, for example, for your music. And you're going to have a track for, for instance, when you import your interviews. Now, what's nice about like your music and your interviews is you can literally just drag and drop those MP3 files from your desktop or your folder to inside GarageBand here, and it'll just show you the audio track. You can make adjustments from there. Uh, the music, same thing with your main voice. You would just record that. Your intro, that's going to be something that you just add in once, and it'll be automatically in your master template so that you don't need to worry about that again. Again, we're, the whole purpose of this is to make it easy for you for production going down the road. But again, like I said, we're going to run some test recordings really quick, but I do want to share with you a few other adjustments that you might need to make as you are going along, and it's just I want to share with you some of these things that will be useful for you as you, as you uh, begin to actually use the software. Okay, so you're going to notice that every individual track here, one, two, three, four, has its own unique volume control. You can raise and lower the volume for that entire track in whole. So if you were to adjust this up, the entire track would be louder. And if you were to adjust it lower, the entire track would be softer. That's helpful, for example, if you have an interview that comes in and it's just very soft, you're listening to it, you're like, ah, I wish that was louder. Well, you can adjust that here, which is nice. And what's also cool is you don't have to be perfect. Try to get it as close as possible for your ear, and the software, both GarageBand and one that I'll show you later, will help you what's called normalize it, meaning it'll match all the levels property properly uh, for the entire file, which is, which is fantastic. Now, there are moments within a track that you might want things to be softer and louder. And so you can't use this adjuster here for that because, for example, if I were to uh, if I were to set it up so that you know the music plays really loud and then it softens and then my voice comes in, well, if I were to lower the music completely, well, you wouldn't hear the music at all. So I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you that while we do test recordings. And so just keep that in mind. Um, other things to pay attention here are this left and right thing. You don't need to worry about that too much. Just make sure it's centered. Uh, this is your pan meaning you can adjust the volume to be all the way on the left side or all the way on the right side. And since we're doing podcasting, uh, we don't need to worry about which side things are on. So just make sure that is centered and at zero. Uh, here is the mute button. So if you have a bunch of tracks going on and you just want to like turn one off really quick, you can just press that button and that mutes that track. Now, if you just wanted to listen to one solo track, just hit this headphone symbol and you'll see that automatically mutes the other ones. And so let's say, for example, you just wanted to hear only one track only and just not hear anything else because you're just working on this one right there. Right there. Uh, just click on solo, and, that, and then you'll be fine from there. So now what I'm going to do is actually do a test recording, and I'm just going to talk about what I had for breakfast, and then I'm going to show you how to edit that thing and how to change the volume in, uh, midway through, and we'll create a little track here before we get into uh, another piece of software that you might use if you're on a PC, for example, called Audacity. Um, but let's just hit record and, and start start going. So here we go. Hey, this is Pat Flynn. Thank you so much for listening into this. I want to talk about my breakfast really quick. So for breakfast today, I had a bowl of oatmeal with some blueberries, steel cut oatmeal actually, and then I also had a coffee and I was just fueling up so I can create these videos for all the awesome students of Power Up Podcasting. Thanks so much. Love y'all. And there we go. You can see the waveforms came in, and they are at different volumes, which is uh, which is represented by these different uh, peaks and valleys here. And you'll notice that there's some places where there is no sound coming in. Those are typically pauses, and some parts are louder, some parts are softer. The main thing you want to look out for is after you record that none of them are clipping, meaning, remember, that's when it's too loud. When it's too loud, you'll notice that these uh, peaks and valleys go way beyond the outer limits of this uh, this display here, and we don't want that to happen. So it looks like we're all good. So let's actually click on this button here to go all the way to the beginning, and I'm going to hit play just so you can hear what this sounds like. Hey, this is Pat Flynn. Thank you so much for listening into this. I want to talk about my breakfast really quick. So for breakfast today, I had a bowl of oatmeal with some blueberries, steel cut oatmeal actually, and then I also had a coffee, and I was just fueling up so I can create these videos for all the awesome students of Power Up Podcasting. 
Thanks so much. Love y'all. Bye. All right. Now let's say I wasn't happy with that ending. And so I'm going to grab what's called the playhead here. That's what this part is called. And I'm going to bring it back to about where I think the, the last part was. I'm going to hit play just to kind of remind myself. Thanks so much. Love y'all. Bye. Okay. Maybe I don't like that. Maybe I want to go back here and I'm going to hit track or excuse me, edit and split regions at playhead. Again, that essentially splits these two regions at where the playhead is at. You can also, as a shortcut, just hit Command T, and that does that for you. Now you can see, I can actually move this part away, which is really cool, or even move it into a different track if I wanted to. If I were to do that, you'll actually hear that outro lay on top of the part right before the, out, uh, the, the, the ending there. So I'm actually gonna play this. It's gonna sound really bad because it's two voices at the same time, but you'll hear it. Awesome students of Thanks Power so much. Up Love Podcasting. Bye. Yeah, that was kind of weird. So again, we, we just wanted to delete that, so I'm just going to highlight that and click Delete, and there you go. And I want to re-record the intro, and to do that, I don't need it on a new track. I can just pick up right where I left off, hit Record, and uh, just to kind of remind myself, I always kind of play the last few seconds uh, when I'm re-recording something just so I know where, where I was coming from of Power Up Podcasting. Okay, so I'm going to get to the end here, and thanks so much for listening in. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, now let's click play or up podcasting. Thanks so much for listening in. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, there you go. Now, like I said earlier, you, ha you can have multiple tracks going on at the same time, so I'm actually going to go to the beginning and select the music one. And I'm just going to hum some music, and you can kind of hear what that sounds like in the background. So I'm going to do that really quick. Hey, this is Pat Lynn. Thank you so much for listening into this. Uh, oh, see, that was kind of annoying because I was able to hear my voice. So what I'm going to do is actually go back, undo that, go back to the beginning, and I'm going to mute the intro so I can just hum music really quick, uh, and then I'll show you how to adjust the volume of that music. Okay, uh, that's all I'm going to do for now, but let's uh, play that back. Okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of silly. Okay, now let's hear what it sounds like with both things together. Hey, this is Pat Flynn. Thank you so much for listening into this. I want to talk about my breakfast really quick. So for breakfast today, I had a bowl. Now, as you can see, that was maybe a little bit too loud. Now, we can do a few things here. I'm going to actually select both uh, of these regions here and move them. Um, so hit Shift, and if you want to control, if you want to actually control m multiple uh, regions at the same time, I'm going to move that over. I'm going to have the music start. So the music will start playing, and then as I start to come in, I'm going to lower the volume of the music and then actually have it fade completely out. So again, I'm going to adjust both of these there. I'm going to start with the music, have me come in. Now, like I said earlier, to adjust the music midway through, you're going to have to actually go to Mix and Show Automation. So I'm going to click on Music here to show that one and volume. Now, you'll notice that there's like a faded uh, yellow bar here. Now, if I were to click, that will turn on. Now the next time I click, it'll actually create a little bit of a, of a, of a button or a dot. So I'm going to click where that dot is there, which kind of aligns with where the intro starts there. And what I want to do at that point is actually that's where I want the music to fade out. So I'm going to click another button at the end here. And then what's cool is I can drag this button down, and this changes the volume over time. So you see it starts at zero decibels here, and then over time it starts to fade out. So let's let's listen to only what that sounds like. So I'm going to click solo and hit play. So that's cool. That's how it fades out all the way. Now let's play both at the same time. Uh, and if you want to turn the automations off, you can actually just click on this uh, button here. Um, that for whatever reason, doesn't show up until you turn show automations on the first time. But now I can easily go back and forth. But let me turn it off. I'm going to make sure everything is on. And I'm going to hit play, and we'll uh, we'll hear what this sounds like. Hey, this is Pat Flynn. Thank you so much for listening into this. I want to talk about my breakfast really quick. So for breakfast today, all right, and there you go. Now your task now is to create a test recording and just play around with the software a little bit, adjust things, and learn how to 
uh, split tracks and cut them and move things around and delete things. I, the, the one thing I do want to share is this latest version of GarageBand um, doesn't make it easy with related to this playhead. Sometimes you might click in this region above the playhead, and what that does is it toggles what's called the cycle, meaning that if you were to actually highlight something like this in this top part, it turns orange. Now when you play, it only plays this region. Now this is helpful if you're doing music and you just want to like listen to one section over and over and over and over and over again, um, but it's not very useful for us podcasts. So you can just turn that off. And if you happen to just like randomly do that on accident every once in a while, like don't get frustrated. Um, just click on cycle or press C to turn that off and then just grab the playhead and then move it to where wherever you want it to go. Um, so now your task is, like I said, create a test recording, talk about I don't know, your breakfast or how the course is going for you. You don't ever have to share it with anybody. It's going to be nice to kind of work out the kinks, to kind of get used to talking to a microphone and not a person, which I know is going to feel a little bit weird to you. But just play around, listen to it. And again, the last thing, don't worry about what you sound like uh, in terms of like what your voice sounds like. What we want is good audio quality, which is what you're setting yourself up for right now. It does not matter what your voice sounds like. I know a lot of people fear that. I know that I fear that. It's what stopped me in the beginning. But honestly, the only person that said anything about my voice over the tens of millions of downloads of my podcast was was the voice inside my head. It does not matter. All right, so that was a deep dive into using GarageBand to help you edit and record your podcast. Now, there's obviously a lot of other things involved related to getting your podcast up and running. And if you aren't already taking my mini course to help you all the way through, you can actually go ahead and get access to that right now for free by going to podcastingtutorial.com. And that'll take you through three days to help you through all the steps that you need to know this and all the other things to help you get your podcast up and running so the world can hear it. So if you aren't yet already taking my mini class, go to podcastingtutorial.com.